This video will cover the use of equations and design tables and the use of creating uh, malleable and multi-configuration SOLIDWORKS objects and parts. So you can very easily uh, change major dimensions, rerun analyses, or do a whole set of analyses. If you have eight different configurations, you could run finite element analysis on all eight to see which one is optimal. You could run uh, entire trade studies on CFD, FEA, or other analysis types uh, in SOLIDWORKS if you have a lot of time to really chase that perfect solution. But overall, this really just lets you have uh, simple definitions, simple global variables that let you update a model very quickly if you have robust connections between all of your geometric dependencies. That's a big sentence. Robust connections between geometric dependencies. That's what a lot of SOLIDWORKS skill and experience transfers into. How to make your model not explode as you change one variable. All right, enough talking. Let's get into it. Uh, new part. Let's change the background to plain white so we can import any pictures taken into a document more easily. Uh, just for an example, let's create a simple sketch on the top plane. Do a simple box starting from the origin and throw some dimensions on it. Nothing new about any of this until right now. Instead of just typing in a number, I'll say equals width. And I want to name this. Uh, do I want to create a global variable named width? Yes. After doing that, uh, I need to assign a variable to it. So two, I want the width to be two inches. Instead of just being named D1, I want this to be called width. So that'd be the variable named, or the dimension will be titled uh, box width, just to differentiate it a bit. At sketch one tells it which element this uh, dimension is inside of, and it'll be two inches wide. So we'll say, okay. And so now you can see, uh, usually over here on the left, it'll show the actual Dimension name, nope, not right now. But anyway, you see the appearance of a red summation sign next to the number, which indicates this is now an equation-driven uh, variable. We'll do the same thing here on the height. So I'll say equals height. I'll create a global variable. Do I want to create one? Yes. I want that to be three inches tall. Instead of just calling it D1 at sketch one, I call it uh, height uh, box. Yeah, it's rectangle, really. And that'll be height box at sketch one. Variable or dimension name at the sketch it belongs to or at the element it belongs to. So we'll say OK and exit this and hopefully things will stay healthy. SOLIDWORKS has actually crashed a few times on me making this video. So hopefully uh, those bugs get squashed. I just did a restart of the computer and that seemingly has fixed it so far. So nothing out of the normal right now. We have a very boring box. We have a sketch. But notice an equations tab has popped up over here on the left. If we drop that down, you can now should be able to modify and change the values of both width and height. Notice now you have equations down there in the setup inside of your sketch. If you have multiple sketches with multiple equations, this list inside the management window becomes very long. Uh, you have multiple global variables defined here. You can change that and it should, as soon as you click OK, automatically rebuild the box. So it allows you to very easily go in, you can, you know, you can type instead of just clicking uh, next to things. It autom you can, with the automatic rebuild box checked down here, uh, it very easily allows things to be modified. So of course you would link this to something probably a bit more impactful than just a, a simple sketched box but this could be wingspan, this could be fuselage diameter, this might be number of vertical tails if you happened to have a pattern entity modeled as a global variable. Global variable might be, you know, the number of uh, landing gear wheels on your nose, nose wheel. It could be, you know, any number of examples that allows things to be studied in multiple configurations very easily. But that's not all. The really interesting thing, which really opens up a lot of doors for computational studies, something you might set up, you know, 12 test cases at the end of the day, run it overnight, come back in the next morning, and see which one of those 12 options gave you the best uh, design variable output. Do a little bit of test case optimization, do an interesting study. The way you do that, which first of all, I'm going to start by saving this. That way, if it does happen to have a mishap, I won't lose all my progress. We can now go to insert tables. We want to insert what's called a design table. We'll just have it auto create from all the structure that we just created in the file. And you'll see how that's emulated very quick. Click the green checkbox. And 
it asks us, which dimensions do you want to include in this table? Well, I want both of them. So I hold down control, I select both. If you're not holding down control, notice it just toggles back and forth. But just like most Windows applications, hold down CTRL, control, select multiple, you're good to go. Say OK, it's creating a table for me, which, you know, lo and behold, looks like an Excel file in a little sub window. Uh, it's a little bit sluggish when it's Im embedded in SOLIDWORKS like that. But for now, that's all we need to do. It made the file, which is a big deal. If we click out of it, it disappears somewhat annoyingly, but it's not gone. The third tab over is where a lot of the rest of the work of this video will be shown. It's called the Configurations tab, and this is where you'd make many different configurations if you wanted to study them in different uh, steps for an analysis. SOLIDWORKS will automatically step through Configure, configure 1, Configuration 2, Configuration 3, and, and run the same type of study on each, and then you can come back and compare all the results. So right now we have a design table created. You can right click here and say edit table in new window. I would highly suggest doing it in a new window because it just works faster. If, if you had new elements since you last opened this table, this window gives you the option to import them. I don't care about the color being a part of my design table or the description being a part of the design table. And there are no new configurations to import into the design table. So I'll say it looks fine. Nothing new, nothing gained lost. So that appeared on my other screen, but here it is now. Nothing all that wild. But notice the, the time we took to name these dimensions is now helpful. Height, or height of the box at sketch one, box width at sketch one. It tells us, basically gives us an idea of where these variables are, are attached to. If we just left the default names, D1 or L1 at sketch one, that's, that's not really descriptive. This configuration is called default. And right now those variables are constrained to the global's width and height. You could keep it that way, but uh, if we're going to be doing a, a set of configurations, we'll do it this way. CFG2, CFG3, okay, let's make that 2 and 3, and then maybe 5 and 5. So three different configurations, multiple different variable names. Let's click Save. Close that, and SOLIDWORKS will detect that we've closed it and say, hey, look, you made some new configurations. Uh, we've imported those for you, thanks. And there they are. They're grayed out at the moment because they're not activated. It makes sense you can only display one version of the model at a time, right? And what we're just using as a little simple square here is just a way to make a robust, non-breakable, hopefully, although I've done that a few times, uh, model that has the simplest of dependencies on equations. Whenever you have a full aircraft that might have you know, a thousand different geometric constraints applied to it, it's, it's fairly challenging and take some experience to get those to update automatically without something breaking. So if, anyway, if you right click on one of these configurations, say show, look, it updates. Right click, show, it updates. So instead of just thinking of this as a box that changes dimensions, picture the coolest airplane that you've ever drawn a solid model of, or, or an assembly of, and you can change its wingspan. You could change uh, airfoils. You could, you could substitute in different different items. You could change, you know, fuselage length, fuselage diameter, number of payloads. However you have defined your dependencies, you can change those variables between different configurations. So if you're really studying, what is the optimal washout of a wingtip on a commercial airliner? You would import that solid model of a commercial airliner, have a variable attached to the incidence of perhaps the, the wingtip airfoil section. And then you could, if you're really pursuing a, a high-end solution, have five, eight, or more configurations that would sweep through a number of different washout angles. Run a satisfactory, notice that, that probably means very computationally intensive, CFD study on each one of those configurations, and then you can compare their induced drag polars at whatever settings the study was conducted at. Now, if, if your brain is engaged in that discussion, you've just realized that that is a ton of computational time. Not only are you using a lot of computation for a CFD study, but you'll now also be using that eight times or 12 times. Whatever config, it has to do it again for each configuration. It has to mesh each configuration. It has to solve each configuration. And oh, by the way, if in the middle somewhere it, it, the configuration doesn't update right, then that case probably fails. And hopefully the configuration is restored when it goes to the next one. So there are some gotchas, and by some I mean quite a few. But if the if you're really seeking a perfect optimal, which I'll say is not always required, but if you really want to find that, then this is one of the tools that really opens up a lot of automated analysis and automated power in SOLIDWORKS. And it all comes from 
defining variables inside of equations. So that's pretty much the basics and introduction to how you create equations and how you manage equations, how you link things. Uh, I would encourage you not to go overboard with this at first uh, because first of all, it, it can make your model very fragile. Meaning that if somebody goes in to, to grab a dimension or if someone without your intimate knowledge of how everything is configured goes in and changes a dimension and perhaps erases one equation. If you have a series of six or eight or ten geometric relationships that all rely on a, on, a uh, on each other, on each other's set of equations to be updated, and then somebody in an uninformed manner opens up a part and doesn't follow your scheme or doesn't understand why uh, you set it up the way you did, then that entire pyramid of equations can come crashing down very quickly. So, like all things, keep it simple and make sure the benefit you're getting from it is worth the complexity you're introducing into the model. Anyway, that's plenty enough. Uh, hopefully you find good uses for this throughout the semester.